Okay, let's get started. So good afternoon, everyone. Um, welcome to this info session for Project CalStop um, on engaging and empowering students to build a safe and inclusive school climate using student-led clubs. My name is Hova Chan. I'm the CDE. Along with my partners from San Diego Promise and NAMI California, we are so happy you can join us today. So a few logistics, uh, we'll be recording this session and we'll also provide a PowerPoint after the um, the session. And then if you have any questions as you hear from um, what we said, please put in the chat box and we'll go over them at the end of the um, webinar. So in the next 45 minutes, we're going to go over quickly over the state of our youth, provide an overview about Project CalStop, and then our partners, um, send, send your promise and NAMI California, we think about their trainings and what they can offer to schools and districts to really support um, students in running and, um, and, and setting up the student-led clubs. And then we're going to answer any questions that you may have and provide contact information. So now we all know that the pandemic has worsened and already not very good student mental health, right? So in 21-22 California Healthy Kids Survey, one in four middle school students told us that they're experiencing emotional distress, which includes signs and symptoms of anxiety and depression. And the numbers go a little higher for high school, which is one in three. And only 41%, which is less than half of all 11th graders um, doing a survey, were optimistic about the future. And for seventh graders, like kids as young as seventh graders, 15% had suicide ideation. In addition to the decrease in student mental health, we also saw a decrease and drop in two protective factors that always protect our students from adverse risk factors and, you know, stress. First, we saw a drop in school connectedness across all grades from seventh to 11th grades compared to pre-pandemic. Um, students telling us that they, they're just less connected to school. Next, we also saw a decrease in caring or perceived caring adult relationships. Our secondary students are simply saying that well, they perceive that adults are less are less caring, probably because the adults themselves are so swamped and have their own issues and just not available time to really to help support the students. The CDE conducted a principal survey among about 1,400 uh, principals statewide using a convenience sample. And almost all our principals told us that there was an increase in student mental health needs increase in demand for school-based mental health services, and an increase in staff mental health needs. However, only about one in four of the principals saying that they have enough resources to address the student mental health. And the numbers go even lower for those addressing the needs of unique mental health needs of students from LGBTQ communities, recent immigrants, foster and homeless students. I think of all these slides, this one provides with some direction. Now, when asked about if they feel sad, stressed, lonely, or depressed, students, most students tell us that they would prefer talking with their friends compared with talking to an adult or counselor or teacher. So I think it shows that it's more than ever, it's re really important to really train and support our students so that they have the skills and resources to really help themselves and really reach out to their friends. The city has been working with our partners, NAMI California and San Diego Promise through different programs, uh, Project Cowell and Project CalStop to really support student-led clubs. In the past four years, three years, we work with San Diego Promise in a program on the Project CalStop to provide a trainings, uh, which includes start with hello and say something to students and schools. So we've trained over 31,000 students from 78 schools, from start with, with uh, from start with hello, and then over 36,000 36, students from 58 schools in say something. Now, mo almost um, no, all of these schools they set up a, a safe promise club um, to work with students on the ca campuses. So we're able to increase our safe promise club in our state to 485 um, total. And many of those clubs won awards and were very active in engaging the students in different activities. We also got very positive feedback from the students and staff and trainings they received from San Diego Promise. 
We also work with NAMI California in the past like eight years in training students, high school students, in setting up clubs called NAMI on campus, high school clubs、um, on campus. And then through those trainings, students learn that they don't have to be mentally ill to need help. And then they also learn that they can, that if they feel sad or depressed, there's always someone out there to really to help you. You'll hear more about these programs in the next few minutes. So we're very happy to announce that we received a new grant from、um, Department of Justice under the Stop Safe Violence Act of 2018, which allows us to continue and expand our partnership with San Diego Promise and NAMI California to continue to provide free trainings and support to your schools and students. With that, I'm turning it over to、um, San Diego Promise, Dion. Thank you so much, Hilva. Thank you, everyone, for joining us on this webinar.、Uh, my name is Dion Chavis. I am the West Region. Uh, manager of projects with Sandy Hook Promise, and just want to get my portion of the presentation started、uh, just by showing you all this quote. You all can read it on your own, but、uh, Alma Powell, who is the widow、um, of the late great、uh, Mr. Powell, who、uh, served under several presidents,、uh, but the quote just says that when young people discover they can be agents of change, wonderful things happen. Uh, they start to serve in neighborhoods, learn about public issues, create innovative solutions to tough public challenges,、uh, and eventually become the voters, community builders, and leaders in our communities and nations. And that's what we aim to do with Sandy Hook Promise. We aim to、uh, just, you know, train up the next generation of leaders to let them know that they can actually make a difference、uh, in the things that they're seeing in their schools, and they can actually be involved and engaged in things that are going on in their schools and their communities. So our mission is to educate and empower youth and adults、uh, to prevent violence in schools. It's simple. We want to stop violence in schools, homes, and communities. We want to make our communities, our homes, and our schools safe for our kids, and be sure that our young people know that they are safe and that they are protected. So I want to talk to、uh, talk to you guys about our programs that we offer. We offer two programs.、Uh, the first program that we offer it's virtual live. That means we provide these services to your students、uh, in a virtual live setting through Zoom. Uh, the first program is start with hello. So start with hello. It teaches young people how to identify and just minimize social isolations,、uh, marginalization, and rejection in order to create an inclusive, connected、uh, community. Now the programs that we offer they're absolutely free.、Uh, both programs that we offer are forty five minutes.、Uh, so the, the presentations are done, like I said, via Zoom, and we would stream the Zoom link into your classroom using whatever technology that you use in the classroom, whether it be a whiteboard, whether it be、uh, whatever you're using in the classroom. That is how the students will be able to see the presentation.、Uh, but the outcomes for grades six through twelve, which is who we provide the trainings for, would be more connected community. We want to see reduction in bullying. We want to see social socialization,、uh, and we want to see kids becoming upstanders. And I'll talk about that a little bit more.、Uh, but changing the culture of the school from within. I tell students that they are the eyes and ears of the things that are going on in the school. They have the ability to change everything that's going on in the school.、Uh, From their level, just starting with them, they have the ability and they have the power. We want to be sure that they know、uh, that they can be empowered. But also, we're seeing that these kids are being engaged; they're engaging more. One of the processes and one of the things that we do, we offer a safe promise club, and、uh, one of my colleagues will talk about that in just a little bit. But the key elements of starting with hello is to, if you see someone alone, you reach out and help, and you start with hello. And we've, we're seeing Hilva gave some great data, but we're seeing also that. Uh, the amount of isolation amongst our young people since COVID has increased, right? So as the young people are alone, they're finding themselves isolated. How can we, or how can we encourage their peers to step up to them and just say something to them and starting a conversation with them? And we see that those、uh, periods of isolation can be reduced just by starting a conversation and just by starting with hello. So that's what this program does. It gives them the tools to、uh, start conversations and to. Uh, speak to their peers when they might be having、uh, a, a, a day that might seem like a bad day, but they're kind of isolating themselves from from everyone else. The other program that we offer is a program called Say Something. Now, Say Something is、uh, it teaches students how they can recognize signs, how they can、uh, look for things on social media, how they can see things with、uh, their peers on the bus in the cafeteria that might make make it seem like they're a threat to themselves and others. We like to say that the first step is recognizing warning signs and threats. After they recognize those warning signs and threats, we want them to act seriously and take it,、uh, take it,、uh, act immediately. I'm sorry, and take it seriously. And then we want to say something. We want them to identify someone who is a trusted adult, someone who that they believe they can、uh, count on, someone they can go to、uh, 
uh, without being judged or without being considered as a snitch or a tattletale and just say something out of concern for their peers. Uh, these signs that are appearing on social media, we want them to know that they don't have the uh, 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 the option anymore of just scrolling past these things and saying, well, this person will be OK or they're just, uh, you know, just trying to get attention. We want to be sure that every single uh, sign is, is is tended to. And, and, and going back to being an upstander, I, I tell kids all the time, you want to be an upstander and not a bystander. You, you don't want to just sit around and, and watch what's going on. You don't want to just sit around and watch someone who could be a harm to themselves or to someone else. You want to be an upstander, which means that you want to go at it and, and, and make a difference. And you want to have an impact on the lives of others and on the lives of your community. Uh, but with this program, we've seen that the goal is to reduce violence, reduce suicide, reduce cutting, and reduce bullying. Uh, more of our students are getting help because of this program. We're starting to see more students reaching out and recognizing those warning signs, and then just understanding what they need to do in order to prevent uh, an act of violence from happening in their school. The next thing that we offer um, is just information on how our programs align with CASEL. So the CASEL uh, format is something that our programs line up perfectly with. Uh, it helps the kids learn relationship skills, social emotional uh, awareness, responsible decision making, and self awareness. And just a couple of key takeaways. So again, we have two programs that we offer through Virtual Live. Uh, the kids are now noticing through, through some of the data that we've seen, they're starting to see that the per their perception of school uh, and school safety is more positive. We know that uh, school shootings are not inevitable, right? They're, they're, it's not impossible to completely stop school shootings, but they are preventable. And we want our kids to know that overall, our schools are safe. Schools are safe places for them. And we want them to know that there are uh, opportunities for them to make a difference and to prevent these acts of violence from happening in their school. So we want to make sure that we're building their knowledge base, building their skills, giving them the strategies that they need to help prevent uh, these things from happening. Uh, the best way that we find to do this is by knowing the signs of someone who might be in crisis and speaking up and getting help for them. And also in turn, helping ourselves and helping everyone in the school by preventing these violent acts. So our Safe Promise Clubs are something that uh, I wanna talk about just a little bit more. Also, uh, I have our Safe Promise Club team on with us and Annie is uh, here with us. Annie, are you taking it from here? I am Dion. Okay. Thank you. Hi, everybody. I am Annie Stevens, one of the directors of Safe Promise Clubs here and um, at Sandy Hook Promise. And um, as Dion was sharing about Start With Hello and Say Something, um, what we're really excited about with those programs is just the immediate impact that Start With Hello has on climate and culture and what Start With Hello, I'm sorry, what Say Something has related to reporting and getting um, people the help that they need uh, when they need it. It's important though that after that training happens, that in the days, weeks, months following a training that that there are young people um, on the ground in the school who are reinforcing those messages. That's how um, a training becomes a cultural shift. So our Safe Promise Clubs, we have over 4,100 clubs um, across the country, and we're so excited to have actually beaten the 500 threshold in California as well just recently. And these clubs are a whole... They're they're very they're 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 varied. Um, we have them in high school, middle school, elementary, K through twelve, community based organizations. These are standalone safe promise clubs, or they have um, they are existing clubs that have adopted the messages. So that means if you have an existing club that um, already addresses mental health, that already is involved with school safety um, or youth leadership. That is a great way to get your Safe Promise Club started. So it really can be very simple to, re to really start embedding these messages and start um, reinforcing our four E's. So our four E's are to educate, empower, engage, and encourage. So all of the, the activities and the trainings and the events that we provide for our Safe Promise Clubs as our support um, are, are going to reinforce those. So what does that mean, though? Um, to put a face on it, educate means educating our youth on how they can prevent violence, so sharing the knowledge that they're learning, bringing that to their peers um, in, in a way that's relevant. 
Um, they, we empower the youth to be leaders of change. They are demanding to be leaders in this space. And so they invite their peers to participate in special events, to grow that collective energy around Start With Hello, say something about this is what we do here at our school. We look out for one another. We, we reach out and help one another. We notice those subtle signs that maybe somebody else wouldn't and get our friends the help that they need. We encourage our youth to be those upstanders that Dion was talking about. We engage youth in violence prevention activities throughout the year. So there are incredible things all the time that young people can do um, with uh, the tools that we that we provide or completely um, you know, out of their own creativity that reinforce those four E's to create that sustainability that we're looking for through the Start With Hello and Say Something programs. Next slide, please. So I'm talking about not just, you know, in, you know, the day or the period after a training, because, you know, those messages, they will, they will, they will, you know, resonate for a while, but then, you know, sometimes life happens and we tend to forget. And all we remember from maybe even the best of seminars is uh, the speaker's mannerisms, perhaps. Through the Safe Promise Clubs, activities that keep resounding those messages of start with hello and say something can happen throughout the year with really easy lift activities. We're not talking about, um, you know, hot air balloons and food trucks. What we're talking about is like having a having a poster out, um, creating a call to action around um, some of our um, some of our um, monthly activities. And we have so many resources. We do not believe in folks needing to recreate the wheel. Um, and with 4,100 clubs, we have a lot of success stories and a lot of things to share. And so we do that all online um, where we have um, our resources. So we have a monthly activity guide. We have a monthly newsletter that goes out to our advisors, chock full of easy lift, um, out of the box uh, activities that you all can do. Um, hand that over to a young person and let them either go straight from the page or use that as a springboard for their own creative ideas. But throughout the year, we have um, key events that y'all can join us on and it just, it broadens awareness. It creates that common nomenclature and really builds that collective energy around it. Um, and it's, it's just a heck of a lot of fun at the same time. So it's great to see the impact. It's great to see those um, messages owned by the young people because we know that they have so much more relevance than we do. Our other amazing resource that our Cal Stop schools have is my colleague, Abby, and I have the pleasure of supporting her work um, that she's doing in California. She's going to share a little bit about um, some really great successes that we've already had in California. Thank you, Annie. Hi, everyone. I am Abby Arisco. As Annie said, I am your resource. I am the Save Promise Club Manager for California, as well as the Pacific region. So quite large, but it's a lot of fun and I love doing it. Um, so now that Annie has shared all that wonderful information, I want to just point out one of our club highlights, which is Calexico High School Save Promise Club. Uh, so they began their club in the pandemic in Oct on October 13th, 2020. Uh, and so they were predominantly virtual to begin. And with all the monthly activity themes that you saw in the last slide and the guide that we give to all our clubs, it aided their club to kickstart just their whole year. And they did just that. So Colexco Save Club members have engaged their entire school community in special events such as the virtual pep rally they had, charity drives, and a happy teacher's day. They use their Instagram as an effective engagement tool, as well as posting campaigns to support mental health and suicide prevention weeks, the Black Lives Matter movement, and Say Something Week. In addition to that, they, be, they were uh, awarded, go back one, sorry. <laughs> Uh, in addition to that, they were awarded a Say Something Week Award, as well as the 2021 Save Promise Club Youth Engagement Award, which just to kind of give you all a picture, that they began that, that club at the beginning of the school year. This award is, is given at the end of the school year. They used our entire uh, show, of, or excuse me, our action year, our action-packed calendar there, uh, and they utilized it, and they did just that, and they fully engaged their club. You can go to the next one. 
So here are some images of their social media uh, being used as an engagement tool. You have the virtual pep rally on that bottom left corner and different action weeks highlighted. Uh, the images of the cell phone on the right shows that they took a poll of the uh, student body to see who knows what an upstander is versus a bystander. And 81% of that student body understood. And I find that such an incredible uh, tool to use. And so now we want to share with you a former youth advisory board member, which we didn't really get to um, touch upon youth advisory board, but youth, youth advisory board is actually, once you're part of a safe promise club, you have the opportunity to apply to this amazing national youth advisory board where they use their own voice to help other clubs throughout the nation. And so this is Ashi Matal, and she's going to share her experience from her Save Promise Club at Del Norte High School. Hi, my name is Ashi Matal, and I'm a senior at Del Norte High School in San Diego, California. Uh, I started in my freshman year. Uh, I've always been felt really strongly about the Sandy Hook Promise shooting or the Sandy Hook Elementary shooting that happened when I was in elementary school. I was in third grade at the time, and it just really shook me to the core. And then Parkland and the Vegas shooting close to home, um, literally and figuratively, it was really hard for me to hear about those things. And I wanted to make a difference, wanted to make sure my school was safer, um, build a tighter knit community and make sure that it never happened again. I think Save Promise has had a huge impact on my school already in the short time we've been running at our school. I started it in my freshman year uh, along with my co-president Trinity. And we've already seen that after start with hello and say something, uh, students feel a lot more comfortable with each other. There's less social isolation, more inclusion. Uh, we're all learning how to embrace diversity. Um, we have a really large and diverse campus. And so uh, teaching those lessons to our peers really makes a big difference in our community. I would say get started right away. Uh, you have a lot of help. You have a lot of resources from Sandy Hook Promise and SAVE. And it can make a big difference in your school community. Having these programs, like I said, has made a huge impact in mine. It can help create a more open, safer environment, help students feel like they know what to do if things ever get out of hand. But even before that, it just creates a more welcoming uh, community where that diversity is embraced, people feel safe, and um, everyone can feel comfortable around each other and that can make school a much better place to be. Now I'm going to pass it back to Dion. Um, thank you all so much. Thank you, Abby. So just a little bit of information on the Sandy Hook Promise trainings. Like I said before, the trainings are absolutely free. Uh, there are two free trainings that we provide. Start with hello and say something. Uh, deliver 45 minute in a 45 minute virtual live environment, uh, which basically means that since COVID, we understand that the need for uh, schools to have flexibility and not have people coming into the school and going out of the school, that's changed. And it's a lot more convenient for us to just do it this way. Uh, you also get access to a Sandy Promise project manager, which will be myself. I will be the one helping you with scheduling the training, and I'll talk about that in a, uh, a few seconds. Uh, and also a Save Promise Club manager, which would be uh, someone like Abby to answer any questions about setting up your Save Promise Club. Uh, we'll also do virtual uh, save events uh, to help the club prepare for call to action weeks, activity, and just to boost the engagement because we want to be sure that the kids know that this is something that is uh, it's fun, it's exciting, it's something new that we're bringing to the school. And again, like I said before, we're putting these things in their hands. Um, also, we do regional trainings, helping to prepare those club members with the knowledge and the tools that they need for uh, sustaining Start With Hello. We don't want this just to be a one-off type of situation. We want to be sure that the uh, messages of Start With Hello and Say Something are sustained after we finish uh, training your students. Uh, the Save Advisor trainings provide monthly activity guides, newsletters. It's just a a wealth of information that's provided and to help uh, you all through this process. So it's not like as a school, you're going to be doing this alone. Somebody will be there to guide you along literally every step of the way to hold your hand through this process. Uh, and a lot of folks uh, want to know about the sustainability management support. Well, there's a $500 sustainability management support opportunity that's coming in 2020, uh, 2023 and 2024. That means if your Safe Promise Club is registered, if you've signed up, they have the opportunity to get $500 to help them uh, with things that that clubs need. Uh, it could be 
uh, for apparel. It could be for pizza party. It could be whatever you decide to use it for. Uh, but it's five hundred dollars, and five hundred dollars in today's world is five hundred dollars. <laughs> so, uh, so just to kind of give you an update on the the, the process for scheduling, uh, and just to go through it, you can see it on your screen. Again, I will be your point of contact for scheduling the trainings for your schools, right? So we will receive interest from you or someone from your school saying that. Uh, someone at your district, someone at your school is interested in partnering with us uh, for one of the programs. Uh, I will then reach out and provide information on the uh, program, on the Safe Promise Club. Then the school would identify who your adult champion would be, who is going to be the person that's going to take ownership uh, of registering the Safe Promise Club and encouraging students to join and just getting the message out. Uh, and then what we'll do is we'll begin conversations about uh, how, you know, how we're going to schedule the training. What is the availability? What does the calendar look like for your school? What when can we get in to do those trainings? What other things does your school have going on? And we have those conversations. And then once we do that, we establish what the training dates are going to be. Uh, then the school will receive a confirmation. You'll receive a Zoom link. You'll receive all of the login instructions and everything that you need to set up the training for that particular day. So we'll do the start with hello training. Uh, we'll come back and we'll be sure that you have everything that you need, that all of your questions are answered. Uh, and then we'll just do a rinse and repeat. We'll come back and we'll do the same thing for uh, say something. So we'll receive a follow up. You'll receive a follow up survey from me uh, asking how you how you thought the program went, asking your students how they thought the program went, the teachers how they thought the program went. And then we'll just come right back and we'll just do the same thing for say something. So uh, it's a very easy process. It's something that we are excited about. We've made it as simple as possible. Uh, again, I will be your point of contact. You'll see my email address at the end of the presentation. And if you feel free to, uh, if you want to contact me about anything, just feel free to reach out to me. If you have any questions, if anything that you feel uh, wasn't explained in the workshop, please feel free to uh, reach out to me and I'll be sure to answer any questions that you might have. Uh, and now I will actually pass the baton along to the good folks at NAMI who are going to talk about uh, NAMI on uh, high school campuses. Thank you. Hi, everybody. My name is Sophia. I'm the Programs Manager at NAMI California, and I'm joined with Angelica, our programs uh, pro uh, Youth Programs Coordinator. Um, so NAMI on Campus High School is our youth program where we have high school clubs on campus that are student-led uh, surrounding mental health awareness and stigma reduction. Um, our goals is to um, are to uh, make mental health and mental health conditions a more acceptable topic at school, bring awareness how students can better support one another, um, again, reducing stigma so people can feel comfortable to talk about um, the issues that they're having, and also build a safe community on campus um, where people can host activities and events uh, supporting mental health awareness. So uh, why does this matter? Um, a lot of the statistics and information that Hilda shared in the beginning, but just some main points that we like to share is that one in five uh, young adults uh, experience a mental health condition each year. On average, it takes about 11 years before somebody seeks treatment for their mental health condition. Um, we saw the suicide rates um, of children considering the thoughts of ending their lives and how um, not supporting one's mental health can actually uh, take a big toll on one's academics. Um, so I'm going to pass this off to Angelica to talk about uh, what happens in a uh, NAMI on campus high school club. Hello, thank you, Sophia. I'm Angelica. I am the uh, youth programs coordinator for NAMI California. So what happens in an NCHS club? Um, so we have lots of events, activities, and trainings available. Um, so events that we have that are pretty uh NCHS wide or NAMI on campus wide are our um, May's Mental Health Awareness Month and Week campaign, which is a opportunity for students to go ahead and put posters all over their classrooms and all over their um, hallways and their on campuses and promote mental health awareness, passing out um, maybe lime green ribbons, things of that nature. Then we have our NAMI Ending the Silence presentation. So this is a presentation that's offered in three different um, versions. So we have the staff and admin version, the parent and family version, and then we also have the student version. And so that is a presentation that's led by a lead presenter and then also accompanied with a young adult uh, 
presenter who shares their journey of mental health. Um, so that will help talk about um, suicide prevention, things of that nature. And it's tailored, like I said, um, for three different, there's three different versions. Um, then also um, events like having guest speakers, we partner with other um, organizations and also our stigma reduction campaigns and our mental health wellness grams. And then lastly, um, monthly we have our trainings, our NCHS trainings. This is required for our first year members um, and school campuses. And that goes over that number one, we have our ending the silence presentation during that time. We also have an opportunity for them to hear from a club representative, student representative that talks about the impact that Nami on campus high school has had on their personal life within their community and school campus. And then also the events and the impact that they have on the community. So NCHS clubs provide learning opportunities for students, educators, and families. Um, the connection to their local NAMI affiliate for local mental health resources and NAMI programs, like I said before, um, the we have different programs that are offered throughout NAMI um, as a whole. So those are like support groups, basic um, trainings, um, family support groups, peer-to-peer -peer classes, things of that nature. Um, also materials to guide clubs to help with um, long-lasting studies sustainable clubs, things like that. Uh, things that are offered there are manuals for both the advisor and the students, an activity guide and templates. And then of course, um, like I mentioned before, we have ongoing supports like our quarterly support calls and our um, trainings and workshops as well. So these are some of our club events that we've had within the last year. So last year we had an opportunity to provide some of our clubs with grants and um, part of that Part of the requirement to be eligible for that grant was to go ahead and plan an event with a diverse um, group or community um, within their clubs or sorry within their campuses so some uh, went ahead and partnered with gsa or others um, partnered with some of the different cultural groups within their clubs um, so within their schools and so some of these are um, the lbgtq plus discrimination stops with me um, that's from Taquez High School. Um, then we have other high schools that also were a part. Some even made local news um, for their different events. We have Villa Park in the um, bottom left and bottom right, and that was a canvas bag um, distribution that they did um, with NAMI Orange County. Like I said, that made local news in, in, within Orange County. Then we have in our bottom middle, we have Del Norte um, High School. And then on the top middle, we have our uh, Justin Garza High School, as well as our Pioneer High School, um, which was our uh, mental health resource fair. So lots of events and activities to be a part of. Um, so then we have our NAMI affiliate support. And so our NAMI affiliates, our NAMI California affiliates have an important role um, within our NCHS clubs program success. They um, are, are within the local community. They help with supporting and providing the opportunities to thrive within within their community. So NAMI affiliates are responsible for establishing relationships with the schools, with the advisors and the students, and then also cooperating with clubs on NAMI events, such as the NAMI walks, fundraising, um, program presentation, club rushes, providing guidance to clubs to help support topics of mental health and illness. Benefits for bringing NAMI on campus, high school to your high school, um, there are a ton of benefits. Some of these are um, creating a more acceptable environment for students, um, accepting an environment for students with mental health conditions, or for those also who may have family members or friends with mental health conditions, establishing themselves as a school that values mental wellness of their students and um, takes proactive approach to early prevention and intervention of students in need. Of certain, uh, certain uh, services and supports, and then creating an environment that is accepting of all students and one that discourages bullying. Also, benefit to bringing um, this this club to your school. Um, the, some of those benefits for students would be expanding their well awareness of mental health and wellness, learning how to identify and develop resources. Um, opportunities to go ahead and knowing how to help make mental illness a more acceptable topic in their schools, 
and being a positive role model to other students, having a positive impact on their peers, developing leadership skills. So there's a lot of opportunity for leadership skills, such as speaking um, engagements, things like that, to be able to be a part of panelists and also um, club representatives. And then also for teachers and school administration, they will benefit by gaining access to a network of volunteers and resources on a national and local level to help with projects, classrooms, presentations, and education, bringing lived experience presentations to their school to help provide students with face-to-face -face personal contact with someone who is living well in their recovery from a mental health condition, having personal contacts at, at NAMI who can help or provide direction to additional mental health resources, having access to the full NCHS curriculum and manuals, and then also networking with other teachers and administrations, uh, administers who uh, focus on mental health. So these are some of our successes from 2021 and 2022. Um, some of those are the surveys that we were able to um, have participation in with our students after different um, workshops and things like that. And some of those reports show that 93% have gained skills that have helped them in the future. Um, also to that they have 85% are able to talk more openly about mental health with their peers. 85% feel like they're able to take on more of a leadership role. And then 85% also advocate for change in their school rules and or policies. And so our student member survey um, also, they felt confident that their clubs help influence um, how teens and adults feel about mental health. And so those are really high, 93 and 94%. Then 91% believe that um, they feel more confident in their clubs to help students know where to go for help when experiencing a mental health concern. So pointing them to their school resources or community resources. And then also that they felt that their clubs help students at schools talk more openly about mental health and that's 89%. So these are all really, really high um, results in that survey. And then for um, some of those so these are some of our quotes that we received from some of those surveys as well. And we just wanted to quote some of them because they are really inspiring. So um, some students said that they feel like the club did a good way of letting the campus know that mental health is important, that it's okay to not be okay. And especially that it's okay to if you need to talk to somebody. Um, also that it brought a lot of awareness and education many uh, to students about mental health and provided a resource and a place that students can depend on when they need help. And then also they uh, one, one quoted that they believe their biggest accomplishment was being able to see how many kids we ha have been able to help out through the years and being able to help everyone uh, make everyone's day better. So what do you need to start? So um, to start, we encourage there to be at least a group of four students because like we mentioned before, or Sophia mentioned, is that it is a student-led club. So we wanna make sure that we have a group of four students, if not more. Um, and also we wanna encourage them to not all be seniors because of course we don't want the club to end with them. So we don't want the end of the school year to come and we lose our entire NAMI on campus high school club. So we encourage that it be an inclusive club for upper and lower classmen. And also we ask that there be an adult advisor who's committed to helping lead the club, but also needs to be comfortable discussing mental health and, all, and needs to be on campus during school hours. The approval of, a, of the school principal and then a, a, uh, the approval of their local NAMI affiliate. So just making sure that there's that connection and uh, relationship built there between the local NAMI affiliate and the school to make sure that they're able to support them. How to get started. So. Um, here we have our QR code, and that is going to bring you directly to the link, which is our interest form. And so it'll ask you questions like which school you um, attend. Um, both students and staff are able to complete this interest form for their school. So if a staff member is um, maybe not able to get to it right away, we can always encourage, like I said, for it to be a student-led club. So to have student leaders go ahead and take that initiative um, to learn more about the 
in CHS Club. We also, once you fill out that interest form, we'll send more um, resources to you. And then you would attend an orientation webinar, which is a 30 minute uh, webinar about the club as a whole. It's about 30 minutes and we give opportunity for questions and things like that. And we ask for both the advisor and three to four students to be present during that time, then to complete the club application. And then lastly, to, uh, to complete that NCHS training, which like I mentioned before, would include ending the silence presentation, um, along with like a club representative and opportunity to go ahead and plan together as a, as a club. And then these are our next, um, at, right now we are actually doing our, our trainings for today and uh, yesterday. And then we have other trainings that are coming up November and January. So if you are interested, um, please go ahead and go back to that QR code. And there's gonna also be a QR code at the end of this presentation as well um, to go ahead and get that interest uh, form filled out so we can go ahead and get you started. So thank you, Angelica. So. At this time, we would encourage you to really scan into this QR code. Um, you can also, we're also dropping a link in the chat. You can just tell us if you have additional interests or questions about any of our programs, either NAMI on campus or the, uh, the, uh, send, your promise, send, send your promise programs that we can just get back to you. Now, we put them together. We thought they really go complementing each other, right? But you don't have to do both. You can just try one, try out one first this year and then see how it works and then add the other programs if you like um, to your school next year. And then our contact information is also on the next slide. So if you have any questions, um, please contact us, you know, um, for general questions about the Cal job, you can just contact me, uh, for Center Promise, Dion, and then NAMI, that's the NAMI uh, mailbox there as well. At this time, we can see if you have any questions that you have regarding any of what, what we just said, uh, from either NAMI or Send Your Promise. Uh, you can put it in the chat box or you can just unmute yourself and just, just speak. So it looks like we do not have any questions at this time. So with that, um, thank you for joining us. And if you have any questions that come up in the future, please contact us. Make sure you um, just let us know your interest as well through that um, interest form. Thank you for joining.